We will be finishing the game in this video by adding the ability to pass tags between players and then choosing the winner based on who held it the least. Make sure to stay until the end of this video because I have some good news for you. Firstly, I want to add something because if you try to host a session and press enter to start a match, you cannot. And that's because we haven't called set input mode to game only for PC tag player controller when we join a session. Now that this has been taken care of, we can continue. We need to store the player or player controller that is currently holding the tag in GS tag game state in a new variable of type PC tag. Make sure to set it to replicated so that everyone will be able to see the server change it. Then we will need an event in the third person character which will be able to pass the tag to another player. This one will run on the server and reliable as well. We will call sphere trace by channel which will trace spheres from start point to end point and check for collisions with other players. The trace will start in the spring arm camera boom and then end 100 units ahead in the direction our camera is looking at using camera's forward vector. Set draw debug type to duration so that we'll be able to see the trace. Now we need to call this event in PC tag when clicking on the leftmost button. You will see the trace in red and in green which is part of the trace after a successful hit. But our spheres can't hit other players, so let's fix that. Go to third person character blueprint and for the mesh component make sure visibility channel is set to block because our trace is checking for visibility channel collisions only. Ok, now you might have noticed that the client doesn't see the trace and that's because it's happening on the server, which is correct. After tracing, we must check if there was a hit using the sphere traces returned boolean value. Then we'll break the hit result, which contains information about the hit. We'll use hit actor to see if we hit a player. In that case, we want to get his PC tag player controller and then set it as the new tag owner. So, Head to GM tag and make a new event which will set the tag owner variable in the game state to a new player controller. After that, we just call switch tag and set the new tag owner to be the hit player. To see if you are the current tag owner, we will add a text to our W info widget which will appear when we are holding the tag. For that, make a new binding on the tag's visibility and return visible if our controller is the same as the game state's tag owner. Before we test it out, I'll extend game time to a minute and 30 seconds. Passing the tag is working nicely, but only the current owner should be able to do that. For that, we will allow players in PC tag to trace only if they are the tag owner, so cast to GS tag, save the game state into a new variable and check if this controller is the tag owner, before we shoot the trace. But now we can do nothing because we don't have anything to pass around, so go to GM tag and make a new event which will choose a random player from the list and set it as the new tag owner. looks random enough to me. One more thing we must add are points, counting how much time we held the tag. For this, go to PC tag and make a new points integer variable set to replicated. Then in GM tag we increase the current tag owner's points by one each second using the match time timer. Then we will add the new tags below the match time in our w info widget 
to be able to see those points. We will bind this text to our points, but for that we need to cast to PC tag, save it, and then use its points variable in the bind function as the text. As you can see, the one holding the tag is getting more points. After the time runs out, we will select the winner based on who has the least amount of points. For this, we head to GM tag, make a new event checkpoints, which will loop through the list of players. We will need to save the winner in a new PC tag variable. First, we check if the winner is available. If not, we set the first player to be the winner. Then other players are compared to the best one, and if they score less points, they become the new winner. At the end, we are left with one player who will get text on the screen saying you won, and all other will receive you lost. So make a new widget, wWinner, and in it add two text components one saying you won, and the other one saying you lost. Then wrap both of them with the widget switcher, having the you won text on the index 0 and the other one at index 1. Before we show this widget, we want to receive a boolean input 1 set to expose on spawn, which will set the widget switcher's active widget index to 0 for the winner and to one for others. Then, in PC tag, we will need another event for showing that widget, called show winner widget, which will first remove all widgets from the screen and then add the new one. Thanks to the expose on spawn setting, we get that one boolean here, which goes into the show winner widget event so that the server can set it when calling it. As always, don't forget to set to run on owning client and check reliable. After finding the winner in GM tag, we will call a show winner widget for the winner player with one set to true, and for others, call the same but with one set to false. Finally, we call this check points event after freezing all the players, and let's see what happens. The one with least points gets the you won text and others you lost. After the match, we want to teleport all players back to the multiplayer menu. To do that, we'll add in another event back to main menu in PC tag, which will make the player leave this session using destroy session. I will print some text to be able to see if the node succeeds. On success, we also want to put the player back into the main menu using open level. Here we want to run an owning client with reliable again. Back in GM tag, we want a new event which will call this back to main menu from the PC tag on each player, making everybody leave and destroy this session. Two seconds after the match is over, it should call that back to main menu and now let's test it out. It failed to destroy the session because we haven't hosted any to begin with. So let's play the game from the multiplayer menu instead. And this is it! Feel free to upgrade the game by adding your own features to it. But don't worry, I haven't ended this project at all. I will continue this series by showing you how to add different multiplayer game mechanics once in a while. I also have something for you, which is my new Discord server, where you can share projects you're working on and give each other feedbacks. Link to the server is in the description. Ask questions in the comments if anything goes wrong. And see you next time!